In today's episode, we are going to build a flock box. So, if you want your little transfer sheets to suck grass faster than a hippie trapped in a pot shop during the apocalypse with zombies at the door, then stay tuned. The box itself is pretty straightforward and can be made out of just about anything solid enough to have a switch attached to it. I made mine out of 6mm craft plywood that I got from Menards. The top is cut to 12 by 7 and the walls are 2 inches tall. This leaves plenty of room for me to get my electronics situated and not feel cramped. With wood glue, less is more. If you have large gaps that you have to fill with glue, that's going to make a weak point, at least with this stuff. And so you want to make sure everything is tight. Regular old tight bond soaks into the fibers pretty well and makes a strong bond, but again, that's only if things are built tight to begin with. You'll notice that I sanded, routed the edges, and then wiped it down with a wet cloth, and then I went and sanded it again. Wiping down the wood before final sanding raises the grain. And we want to do this because any wood that goes through a machining process gets compressed, and getting it wet helps bring up all those compressed fibers. And it's really amazing the difference this would make in the final product. Um, once you get it wet, go ahead and feel it again and, and, and just feel how rough that is. Uh, but we can uh, just hit it with some 220 sandpaper again and then it's totally smooth as glass and really makes a nice finish later on. You'll need three half inch holes for the switch and the jacks. They can be anywhere, but I put my switch right in front and a jack on either side. One for the power, one for the alligator clip. Drill an eighth inch hole in the top. We're going to have the positive end of the negative ion generator come through that and connect to our steel plate. An angle grinder works pretty well to cut down that steel plate. Uh, I cut mine to 11 inches uh, and then I just filed off the burr with a file. After crimping on one end of a disconnect, trim back the other end, maybe an inch, inch and a half. Then untwist it and lay it out as thin as you can. This is going to contact the plate, which our static grass is going to lay on. And uh, also, it would not really be a good terrain project without some hot glue, so we're going to use it to secure the wire in place underneath. We are also going to secure the plate itself with two-part five-minute epoxy. This stuff is from Gorilla Glue. And be sure to leave the center empty as the wire being coated in plastic is going to prevent it from making a good contact. And without that, the, this whole project is worthless. Put something heavy on it for about 30 minutes and um, uh, if you want a piece of parchment paper will prevent it from sticking uh, where you don't want it to stick. Afterwards I wet sanded with some 120 grit sandpaper. 
it did a really good job of cleaning up the excess squeeze out from the epoxy and the surface uh, got this cool brush to look finish to it so it, it looked good. If you have access to a laser printer, you can take an image and transfer it onto the steel using acetone. It's best to do this with a drier Q-tip and make several passes because if it's too wet, it'll cause the toner to bleed out and make the image blurry. Steel obviously rusts, so I'm going to coat it with something called Bow Shield. Let it dry for about an hour before wiping it off, otherwise it's going to want to take some of that transfer image that you just did with it. If it helps, mark two lugs on the switch with a black marker. They have to be on the same side, but it doesn't matter which side, and we'll just say that is negative. And since we are dealing with DC power, that's going to matter. On the jack you're going to use for power, the middle pin is positive, and so you're going to solder the red wire to that. Okay, let's talk about what's going on here. See that crap? That's wrong. Don't solder to that terminal. Use the other one. The shrink tube isn't totally necessary, but it does help the solder joints with uh, being supported and not breaking over time. Uh, but if also if you're paranoid of shorts or something like that, then uh, you may as well just use it. On the other jack, just one black wire. Make sure it's connected to the negative lead. And this is what our alligator clip is going to plug into. These terminals get connected directly to the switch. Use the two in the center. Remember, connect the black wire to the lug you colored black earlier. Connect two more terminals to the negative ion generator on the two remaining lugs, but also attach a second wire with the black one. Remember the single red wire from a while back? Attach the opposite connector to this red wire.
you should have something that looks like this. I've used hot glue to secure all of my wires and they aren't ever going to move unless I make them move. So I'm not worried about any of the bare connections ever touching each other. To recap, power coming in, then going out to the ion generator, the negative wire coming back into the switch and also feeding the alligator clip, which is the negative side of our static field, then the black wire from the 12 volt power supply. Finally, the voltage wire from the ion generator to the steel plate. I've cut the red wire off this pigtail. We don't need it. Slide on a piece of heat shrink and attach the clip. You may have to strip the wire back a bit, but that's okay. I wouldn't skip the heat shrink on here because it does a lot to reinforce the connection and this part will get a lot of flex anyways. At this point, you're pretty much ready to go. If you turn it on and can make it arc, then you've got it right, and we can move on to the next part here. A note about prepping your grass. If there are any clumps at all, it won't work. At least not where that clump is. You'll have a bald spot on your transfer sheet. It needs to be loose, so running it through a wire colander is a good thing. Try to use up as much of the surface as you can because it only picks up whatever is directly on top. So if it's all in one small pile, you're really defeating the purpose of creating a large flock box. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I'm hoping you'll come back for more. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section and I'll do my best to answer them quickly. Thanks for watching and please do hit that subscribe button.